So for reference with the stock skid before we do anything, uh, height was about 15 inches. So we'll see how much uh, clearance I gain with the new skid. So right here I have Savvy's uh, belly up skid plate and the engine skid. Um, so these two main pieces are aluminum, the rest of which is uh, bare steel. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start this install is prime and paint it. So I got a Pour 15, I don't know if you've seen me use this in other videos, but uh, the metal prep neutralizer is going to go over everything, and then the actual top coat. Um, so with the main cross member, I did tape up the holes so I can get the inside. I'll like pour it in here and slosh it around. Um, the rest of this, obviously, I'll just cover, um, I mean, get everything coated with the paint. So hopefully you guys can see the uh, transmission with some wood. Um, so now I'm going to remove these skid plates. So there are six 18mm uh, bolts and that will give me access to um, the little attachment where like the cat back uh, touches basically the Y pipe on the exhaust. I'm going to break those bolts so I can wiggle the exhaust and get the oil pan out. Before I do that I forgot to mention there are uh, four uh, nuts that are half inch where the uh, transmission mount bolts to the skid. We gotta remove those before we drop the skid. The skid is off. You gotta remove this um, exhaust hanger and the transmission mount. So it had uh, four 15 millimeter bolts and then we have this rubber bushing that when the exhaust mount slid through you just slide it right off. So I took the uh, thimble, the rubbery part of the exhaust hanger out of the old one, put in the new one right here. Um, so next step is I'm gonna be putting on, so these are kind of the outer C's on the axle. So when you put them on, uh, see how like one side's flat, one side's uh, slanted? The slant is going to go towards the rear of the vehicle. So this one's going to be on the driver's side. You're going to find that middle body mount bolt right there. Um, so we're going to unbolt it, probably jack up the body a little bit, and slide this over, and it should fit nicely. And do that on both sides. And that bolt is a three-quarter inch. So I ended up having to remove all three body bolts. It might be because my vehicle's jacked up. I actually had to stock stack up a ton of wood, uh, scuba weights and wood to get it jacked up enough to get this body mount out. Once it was out, I was able to just easily uh, get a mallet and push this thing on. Just make sure the hole lines up with the body mount bolt. Um, or sorry, not the body mount, but the um, skid plate bolt. And uh, yeah, now I gotta jack it back up, put this in, bolt these three back in, and then go to the other side. So I've got both of the outer sleeves on. Um, so the inner sleeves kind of just slide in. We're not gonna bolt them in yet. Um, the problem is the one on the driver's side or the brake lines, you kind of have to go to the rear, get it in, and slide. It's definitely a pain. But I want to go over the um, bolts. So what came with the kit is we have 17 of uh, these hex cap bolts, and there are 16 of these, um, I don't know what you want to call them, but they're like, yeah, those. And then two and two of these other ones that are gold. So each of these hex cap bolts will get a washer and uh, the flange nut too. And same with all these, we'll get a flange nut as well. But to bolt all of them, um, so there are going to be eight bolts that go um, on each uh, frame brace. And they're going to end up going through this as well. Um, this is how this is going to go kind of in the car. So again, it, I think it matters which direction it goes in. I took these smaller gold bolts and just loosely attached the uh, exhaust hanger. Uh, so it's going to go in the Jeep like this kind of too. Um, what we're going to do is while this is loose, we're going to slide this over the exhaust and we're going to mount up using the old bolts, tightening them to 27 foot-pounds. Um, just note that it should go like this and this should face towards the rear of the vehicle, I believe. And the cross member is actually going to thread through here. Before I put in the cross member, I uh, screwed in the top bolts. Uh, not, not all the way tight, but just enough to get it in place. Because the, bo the bottom one there, I'm going to have to take out because we're going to have to put it through the f um, four holes on the cross member. Um, same thing on the other side. Let me grab my light. Um, yeah. And then just on the cross member, just remember that um, these bolt holes on the bottom need to point towards the rear of the vehicle. So now we're just going to jack it up um, until we can slide this thing in. Tighten up all these bolts. They're all half inch, just as much as I could get with a ratchet and a wrench. Uh, so you can see it's fully installed now. Um, so next, what we got to do is we're going to use those long gold bolts right here. They're 9 sixteenths of an inch. And we're going to go through uh, these holes and into here. If you guys can see this, I was making contact with the tub. Um, let me hold, see if I can get my lights steady. So I put a nut right there. That's where it was contacting. Um, now I'm going to jack it up and hopefully dent the tub with that nut. 
lower it back down, get that out. And just make sure all of your wires here and uh, plugs and stuff are out of the way and not gonna get crushed. Because of the slope of the tub, I had to get a ratchet strap, which you guys can hopefully see. And you see I switched out, I chose a slightly larger washer. I'm still trying to dimple this tub um, and the ratchet's hold it in place so it doesn't slide too far towards passenger. Um, and once that's done, we just bolt it in. In order to uh, get everything to fit, I had to detach the exhaust. So there are two 13 millimeter bolts and there are more over here, which I didn't have to do because if you see mine is rusted off. But, um, or you could just pop it out of the bushing. But anyway, as soon as I did, the whole thing raised up a lot. I could tell that was, uh, it was under a lot of stress. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna have to do some sort of exhaust mod, but we'll get to that later. And so I've got everything uh, in as far as the cross member goes. I tightened up these bolts for the exhaust hanger. They're 9 16 Just did them as tight as I could. Uh, tighten everything else so everything's good. We got clearance on the transfer case. In time, what I'm gonna do is adjust my, I have a cable shifter, which I think is pretty much probably a necessary mod if you're doing this. So I replaced my transfer case shifter already, but now I've got to adjust. There are two, um, uh, these bolts, one down here and one up there, and just adjust and make sure it shifts nicely before I put the uh, skid on. So I got the exhaust out. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that held this in to the cat, but they're totally rusted, so I had to saw all them off. These studs right here were welded on, so I had to grind them and then eventually punch them out. Uh, now what I'm gonna do, like I said, so I'm gonna cut off a four inch section here where it's relatively flat, and then just seam it back together, weld it back together, and see if that can maybe fix my problem. Then maybe at the end, I'll weld on my own tailpipe to gain a couple inches there, we'll see. All right, so here's what I ended up doing. So like I said, um, I cut off that section here, welded it together, and then I actually spliced that section back in here. Because, so I, I tried it like this and I saw that it was gonna contact again, needed to go out more towards passenger, so I put it back here to do that. Um, I just installed it, um, and then my, it wasn't contacting anything, but it was very close to the passenger shock. Um, so what I did, I actually, I noticed that the track bar mount was close to the gas tank skid too. So I went back, I redid part of the alignment, I pulled everything in about half an inch. So here's a side by side of the Banks Monster exhaust with uh, my stock one that I modified. So this also does not fit with the tummy tuck. So it's contacting the track bar, the shock, and the gas tank skid. So um, I like that this is modular. You see it all just kind of slides and clamps. So I'm going to cut a bit off here hopefully pull it in, but I have a feeling I'm gonna run into the same issue when I shorten my stock one up here of uh, contacting the skid and gas tank more. Um, so we'll see. Here's the banks installed besides the hangers. Um, so I cut about an inch off back there. As you can see now, there's some clearance at the track bar. There's a good amount of clearance at the shock. It is just barely contacting the gas tank skid. I could even probably just grind that down, but I have a feeling with the hanger, it might, uh, like if you pull it ever so slightly, it stops contacting. Uh, it's an easy swap, so I'm going to put this back in for now and then change it out in the future. So once you're done installing this, um, you may need to lengthen your drive shaft. So I have my old front and rear drive shaft measurements here and then I measured them with the new. Um, so I gained about a three quarter inch of length in the front and a quarter inch in the rear. Um, I think that that's insignificant enough that I'm not going to uh, send my drive shafts out to be lengthened. With the cross member installed, I drove the Jeep around, tested and everything, and it's all good. So now I'm getting ready to put this in. So again, um, this kind of fan out is going to go towards the rear with the holes. I'm going to start by attaching it to the cross member that's in here using their um, flathead bolts and put this in. Probably use the transmission jack stand to get it to stay in. Access some of the nuts. You're going to have to use the tape method to put the nut in a, a box end wrench with some tape to hold it to get it in. And uh, before I tighten that all the way, so we got to put on are these little wing spacers. And you'll see, so there are four of them, and they're different shapes. Um, so they got to go, because they'll have to match the shape of this, uh, this C that we put on the frame, right? So if that C's got a slant, which it should in the rear, then this wing spacer is going to go in like this and over this hole. That was, so that was the slanted wing spacer. And the other slanted one will go on the other side, and then these flat ones can go in the front on both sides. Um, yeah. All right, so we've got the uh, brace installed. You gotta kinda wiggle it weird to get it in place, but installs just the same. You're gonna need another wrench and a deep well half inch. Um, tighten all these down just hand tight. 
tighten the old bolts on the ends to 55 foot pounds and uh, we've got the new uh, transfer case skid installed I'll measure the new height in a second right, so the old skid height was 15 inches if you remember and the new one looks like about exactly 17 inches so I gained 2 inches of clearance here's kind of like an overview of what it looks like through the whole skid okay, so first these little brackets uh, they're part of the engine skid so you're going to use the um, the uh, grade 8 bolts here with the washer and then the corresponding nut. So they kind of go, uh, I'm going to need my light, hold on, alright. So here's the, we're under the engine, here's the motor mount, so you can see this one's already installed. So it's a 916 bolt and uh, nut and you can get a wrench down in there, you're going to have to finger get it on and it goes like this. Hopefully you guys can see this, but so I got the engine oil pan skid on and it took me a lot of figuring out. Okay, so to start, you have uh, these two struts, right? One is longer. The longer one is gonna be on the driver's side. That's the right side right here. I had to grind down a little. I'll show you guys later. But make sure, so the L should both kind of face outwards. So the driver's side bracket, so you have that um, this tab on the motor mount. The, the, the bracket on the tab is gonna come to the rear of the vehicle and then the strut's going to go in front of that. On the passenger side, that that bra the tab coming off the motor mount bracket is going to go towards the front of the vehicle and the strut is going to go on the inside of that towards the rear of the vehicle. Um, hopefully you guys can see a full picture. And then I put um, the passenger one on the top hole and the um, driver's side one on the bottom hole and like I said I had to grind it I'll show you a better picture later but then what I recommend before you tighten any of these down just mock it up get something to hold this in place and get um, this more where you want it so get these four holes lined up and the um, drain drain uh, oil drain plug bolt lined up and then so I punched four holes and drilled these six in successively larger sizes out to um, five sixteenths of an inch and then you tighten these with the screwdriver and a half inch, just like you did all the rest of those um, flat uh, screws. And then that's it. And then you tighten these up, and these are all 9 16 This is the driver's side uh, bracket, the longer one. I had to grind down a chunk off, you see. It's not square anymore uh, to make it fit.